The Elgato Stream Deck is often touted as being one of the best productivity devices around. I picked one up 18 months ago to test that premise and I wanted to share my experience with you because while it's an incredibly powerful device, it does take a bit of work to get to the point that really helps you in a meaningful way. The Stream Deck is a programmable macro pad that allows you to control your computer at the touch of a button. This is the Mark II version that has 15 buttons, but you can get them in a range of different sizes. The Stream Deck, as the name suggests, was originally designed for streamers who need access to quick actions while multitasking in a live environment. But like many tools that are designed for specific professional workflows, the Stream Deck has a lot of crossover that can help you in just about any job as well. A big part of that is thanks to Elgato's library of plugins that can help you to operate your most used applications. And this is where I was so excited to see how the Stream Deck would improve my productivity. The things that really caught my eye to begin with were actually things like its ability to control my lighting. There are plugins for Philips Hue as well as Elgato's own lighting system. And so it can be really cool to just sit down at your desk, press one button and switch on all the lights in your office independent of who has actually built them. The Spotify plugin was one of my early favorites too, not just because you can pause and play and skip tracks on the Stream Deck, but because the cover art actually shows up on one of the buttons and it just looks really cool. You can even play some basic games on the Stream Deck and use things like a weather application to check how hot it is outside, but to be honest, none of this was helping me actually get stuff done. So I decided to really dig into the Stream Deck software and figure out if there were any plugins I could use that would actually improve productivity in my day-to-day -day work. As always, you find yourself dependent on whether your specific applications are supported by this kind of software. For example, for video calls these days, Microsoft Teams and Zoom are both supported with first-party plugins. But if you work in a Google Suite environment, you're gonna have to program your own hotkeys to operate things like Google Hangouts. As long as you've got the window selected, when you press those buttons on the Stream Deck, they're gonna do things like mute the microphone or close the call. And while that is pretty cool, it's not always that useful. For example, if you've got the wrong window selected in your browser, then you can trigger off an action that you completely didn't want. It's also not that much quicker than learning the keyboard shortcuts yourself. So at least at first, I found it a lot more useful to use those hotkey actions when I was working in one application that had complex keyboard shortcuts I couldn't keep on top of. For that reason, a lot of video editors could really make good use of the Stream Deck. But here's my question to you if you are in that situation. Is it better to actually learn the keyboard shortcuts so that you are flexible if you ever need to work away from your main desk setup? And so I actually started just challenging myself to learn more keyboard shortcuts on all of the applications I use, and it kind of made the Stream Deck feel a little bit redundant. But it wasn't all doom and gloom for the Stream Deck. It actually took a change of career for me to really start to get the most out of it. We're gonna get right into that, but first I wanna thank today's video sponsor, Uni Accessories. One of the downsides about the Stream Deck is that it doesn't actually have a USB-C connection. So if you wanna use it with a new MacBook Pro, you're gonna to have to get some kind of adapter. And that's exactly where Uni Accessories come in. Uni have a whole range of different dongles and hubs that can help you add more devices to your main computer. They were kind enough to send me their 8-in-1 USB-C hub, which has a few special accessories that sets it apart from other adapters. By far the best thing about this hub is its removable 8-in-1 cable. It's long enough so that it's not dangling off the side of your computer, which is a real bugbear of mine with many other adapters, but also so many other adapters have their main cable surgically attached to the side, and it means that if it ever frays or bends over time, you can break the entire hub. Having a swappable cable means that the uni hub is going to be a lot more durable over time, and I also find it a lot easier to switch between devices. I've actually got mine velcroed to the wall, and I use it with both my Mac Mini and whichever MacBook is currently stationed there. It's just so easy to pop the cable out and stick it into whichever computer I'm using at the time and be able to use all of my accessories in the same way. So all in all, uni have thought really hard about this USB-C hub, and if you want to check it out yourself, there's a link in the description. So it really did take me about a year to start figuring out exactly how the Stream Deck could benefit my day to day. And it took a change of job to really kickstart that process. 
I've actually got to thank you for this as well because for about 10 years I've been working in marketing and never really feeling that fulfilled but recently I made a switch over into an editorial role at my company and have been working as a YouTube channel manager full time. I wouldn't have been able to start that role if it hadn't been for the things I'd learned running this YouTube channel and getting views from the likes of you so thank you so much but also the Stream Deck made that transition a lot easier than it could have been otherwise. In my role I have to synthesize a lot of text from different sources for things like channel descriptions and keyword lists and if it wasn't for the Stream Deck my clipboard would be absolutely rammed. One of the main things I'm actually using the Stream Deck for now is text automation and so I have a list of keywords for a story that we're going to be running over the next few weeks. I only have to do that once and then the Stream Deck makes it so easy for me to select those keywords and populate them at any time. It sounds simple and to be honest it is, that's the beauty of it, but it saves me about an hour and a half every day. I also find that there are sometimes strings of text or code that are a lot more complex than just a keyboard shortcut which it really helps to have a button to input. So for example, if it is a long Excel formula that you need to use constantly, but you can never quite remember how to pull off, having that as an action in your Stream Deck is really, really helpful. I even found a really cool YouTube plugin that allows me to see when a channel has posted a new video so that I can go in and make sure that the upload was successful and that everything's been populated as expected. And guess what? I actually started using it for video editing after all because although I am really comfortable now on using all the shortcuts for Final Cut Pro, at work I sometimes have to dive into Premiere Pro and the different keyboard layouts really throw me and just it's impossible to work quickly on them. So I've just set them up as a Stream Deck and that way I don't have to waste time learning on the job. If I want to learn those keyboard shortcuts, I can do it in my own time, but it's not going to stop me from helping the team out really quickly. So after 18 months, you can see that while I personally love the Stream Deck, it's a pretty mixed bag as to whether you should actually pick it up to improve your productivity. A big part of that is knowing which applications you're gonna use in your day-to-day -day job and whether they are automatically compatible with the Stream Deck or whether you're gonna to have to be a bit more creative in setting up your own macros. If that is the case, then you also have to acknowledge whether you're the kind of person who likes to dig into these processes and set them all up for success. You also have to be realistic about what you expect from something like a Stream Deck. Yeah, sure, you can automate absolutely everything if you want, but I find that most people often just use 20% of a product's capabilities and are completely happy with how it works. Let's be honest, that's exactly where I've ended up with the Stream Deck and I'm completely happy having it on my desk as a nice little companion who helps me out every now and again and not something that's gonna dominate my workflow. Because when it comes down to it, I do wanna learn things without taking shortcuts all of the time. If you're intrigued by any of the other accessories I've got on my desk, then check out this video and I'll see you in a bit.